Hello and welcome back to another video. What we're looking at here is an oak frame box that I've built myself during my tea break at work today. It's certainly not going to win any awards for neatness, but it's a work in progress. And as you may well have guessed, probably from the title itself, I've decided to build my own arcade stick. Now this one is going to be for the Sega Mega Drive. I've gone for the three button variety. I don't really believe six buttons is that important on the Mega Drive. There's a few games that take advantage of it. The only one I can think of that I definitely play is Streets of Rage 3, and you can live without it anyway. So, I've cut some holes for some 30mm Samoa buttons. Now, a lot of people on the forums are saying that you can't use 30mm Samoa buttons on solid timber-based control panels. Well, I think that's an absolute load of rubbish, because if you cut yourself a 30mm hole, you'll find they slot in quite nicely. They won't be going anywhere, but if you are a little bit paranoid about it, you could probably add a little bit of silicon to the areas that aren't obviously by the button, just on the sides there. Like then I can guarantee it will definitely not go anywhere. So I positioned the start button on the back. I did consider putting it on the side. Again, that's going to be another Samoa 30mm button. Could have chose a smaller button. Didn't really think about it in all honesty. Also added these little corner pieces, more for a de decorative feature. So I've yet to get the stick, but when I do, I should be soldering it all to this Sega Mega Drive free button pad PCB. It's a little bit of extra work here because I need to desolder all of those points there and thread them through a hole in the back, but it's all a learning process. It's all about getting involved with this soldering thing. And uh, I believe I can do it. I also bought these crimps which are going to make wiring up the buttons a little bit easier. And the stick comes with its own wiring loom, so it's really just a case of getting in there with the soldering iron, doing a little bit of research, and find out how it goes. Now, obviously, it's a nice idea to think you could make these and sell them, but I don't think people would pay the price, because for the Sanwa buttons, the Sanwa stick, and the Mega Drive PCB, you're looking at around about 50 quid. When you, you know, factor in building the box, doing the soldering, you're going to have to sell these for around about £100 to make it worthwhile whatsoever. I don't know how many people are out there that would pay £100 for a Sega Mega Drive joystick. Maybe if I made them for the Neo Geo, but again, you know, then you're looking at a greater cost to get a Neo Geo joypad or the equivalent. So I don't know if it's really that feasible. Uh, there is one person that I'm going to make a box for so they can make their own joystick. I may well make a second in the future. I don't know. It's just really just another little project. Just something I thought I'd do for fun. And that's it really. I will certainly make an update as and when I get this fully operational. I'm hoping within the next month. And uh, when I do, I'll be sure to bring you a video showing it in action. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll load some more videos soon.